Hello students, welcome back. In today's class, we learn about joints, threaded joints and older joints. The topic is threaded joints and older joints and we learn about threaded joints. Before that, I hope everyone is at home enjoying lectures, enjoying videos of other things, uh, movies, your web episodes, everything. But behind that you need to study a lot, met a bit. That's why I'll request everyone to go through the notes and everything, uh, to go through the studies a bit. But please be at home, don't go out. If it's required, go out with mask and try to maintain social distancing if you are going out of the home. I'll, uh, I request you not to go out of the home. I request you to stay at home. So let us start today's class. I'm Arindam Chakravarti, Assistant Professor of Swami Vivekananda School of Science and Technology, as well as a guest lecturer in Calcutta University, Kolkata, and Calcutta University, known as University of Kolkata, University of Calcutta. So in today's class, we'll learn about how or joints, uh, how joints make. Uh, the changes in a in entire plant and how the joints are made how how many classifications are there how what are the main classifications and what classification should be in our mind when we are uh, interacting with our uh, gear uh, of uh, interacting of the joints now let us start now joints has been defined in terms of motions they uh, so in today's is plus it will be joints in terms of motions so in terms of motion joints has been in, uh, has been distinguished in two uh, in two in two patterns one is mechanized and one another is non mechanized now in terms of motion means mechanized means there will be some sort of motions like uh, the joint will have uh, will transmit one motion to from one end to another end or rather there will be some sort of uh, some sort of uh, 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 some, so there are no stationary things. Everything will be a moving or part. The part will be moving. The joint will be moving, or you may move the uh, joint. So everything depends. Okay. Uh, this is what uh, uh, the mechanized joint means. Like knuckle joint, it is used uh, to connect two uh, two coaches of train uh, for uh, maximum tensile stress and uh, uh, turnbuckle. It is used for the uh, stre the uh, for the columns and the struts in the uh, in your uh, sheds or in, in your roof like uh, you may see the specialized roof for metros or train stations as well as, well as you can see in the airports it is used over there to uh, to tight uh, to make tight one side as well as uh, to make loose one side that means one side extension one side uh, one side contraction so this everything can be done with this mechanized joint there are universal joints which connect to gearbox of the car to the differential that means to the wheel so there is a joint name as universal joint uh, there are many more of them couplings couplings are used to uh, to join two uh, 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 two rods or uh, two rods around that might that might be your two pipes also so what is the main reason to study the joints uh, for engineering? Now, it is it makes a valuable reason for uh, for mechanical engineering to study because mechanical engineer needs it because you have to design it. You are, you are having a, uh, a plan to operate while you are having some motionized things or you may not have, not have some motionized things. So, according to that, you could design. That could be mechanical, that could be production, that could be also, that is also valid for aeronautical or automobile engineering or that means mechanical related. Uh, now comes uh, back to other different other branches like electrical computer science everywhere. So uh, computer science and uh, electrical they ha they hardly need it they hardly needs it but they also need it they also need it because like uh, the connectors what we use in our laptop uh, for connecting the uh, the LAN wires connector that is a jack or the uh, sockets what we used for the for connecting the for providing power to our laptops or a, or a system so everything is is a type of a joint 
so that that is a joint you that also is a joint that connects that's or the two uh, electrodes in a uh, to connects one electrode to another electrode so everything is a joint it it does so okay next is uh non mechanized joint or when uh, where next is comes for chemical engineering chemical or biotechnical biotechnical uh, uh, biotechnology engineers or biotechnicians engineers how does or medical engineers how does it requires for example chemical engineers uh, for chemical engineers or biotechnology engineers if you see for the uh, big plants where you have to make certain uh, rotation of a certain centrifuges to rotate or you want to make a thing a mass production where you have to say, make something rotate or to vibrate for a uh, for a pattern at time so you have to transfer one motion the motion uh, point to uh, to other uh, to the working point so over there you can use a long shaft Because there may be some pulling effect, as I have shown you in the previous class. So uh, you could or you you could actually uh, eradicate these things, and you could bring uh, one more uh, one more things. That thing is that you you could use joints. Now the joints help us to transform, or it makes uh, the problem of pulling of shaft or shaft uh, heavy. Uh, the shaft weights, or it may be for not for shaft, it may be for other joints or holding or many things. So, joint uh, understanding a joint uh, terminology for every branches, every branches of engineering is is very very necessary because it teaches us it teaches us many things. Okay, okay. Ah. Uh, when it, when it come to joints it uh, since we are dealing with right now in mechanical joints so we'll talk about this type of mechanical joints there are some other joints also now like in terms of when, when you comes in terms of non mechanized joint like threaded joint welded joint or cotter joint there are other joints also like uh, the joints which we make through glue or we make through like with other components so here here comes the difference that that's a chemical joint that is made by the chemical engineers so uh, there may there, there uh, comes like this or there can be other joints which is equipped with our bones how the joints are made for our joints uh, bones uh, for the operations what we do so everything depends on on the every mechanism depends on joints so we have to keep uh, keep attention on the on joints like the uh, like the doctors orthopedic orthopedicians in a uh, in hospital they goes for the joints of that is the skeleton of our body so there is some there are many joints which are uh, which has been uh, which, uh, which has been uh, which mimicry has been used by mechanical joints like knuckle joint turnbuckle you could use uh, you could see in a practical world also in our body so turnbuckle i hardly know that we don't have turnbuckle uh, action in our body something like but we have knuckle joint actions in our body like uh, we have either we have some bones which mimic like a knuckle joint or you may say the knuckle joint mimic like one of our uh, uh, bodies is joint one of the skeletal joints okay next what is threaded joint threaded joint is nothing but uh, we can we can threaded joints can be more classified in two terms uh, one is bolts and nuts and another one is screws so uh, what do you mean by thread thread is a uh, this type of pattern zigzag pattern which is made to uh, con to uh, connect of two objects that is bolt and nut uh, this is the bolt and this is the nut now this is same method is also used on the screws but the thing is there is absence of nut because the work of nut is done by the material where it has been screwed that means where it has been where it has been used it works like a nut but a uh, bolt ke, bolt ke, uh, in bolt we don't we don't uh, the material where we used to attach uh, to materials to materials we we don't we don't take in consideration the material to be work as a uh, nut we actually uh, keep provide some nut for ma maximum maximum protection so if we take a cross section of this part the complete cross section of this bolt okay we find these things the this is your this is your bolt and this is your nut this is the, this part uh, this part is your external thread okay and this is your internal thread 
okay now let us magnify this thread structure how does it looks when you see maxim when you magnify it okay so when you magnify it you could see this thread structures to be like this okay this is the internal thread and this is the external thread so what is the internal thread this one is the internal thread okay and this one is the external thread this one fine so from this point to this point is termed as pitch it is termed as pitch p i t c h pitch okay and uh, there are uh, many types of definitions on this from this point to this point that means the from smaller point to this point or uh, let me rather i mark on this let me take a pen from this point to this point this is termed as d minor or that is called my, uh, uh, lowest diameter of a of the screw or of the bolt and from this point to this point is termed as d major this is d major and this is d minor like what you do in guitar d minor d major this is the same thing like over here d minor d major that is the diameter of the minor uh, min, uh, minor thread and this is the diameter of the of the major thread or the maximum thread and uh, the uh, and there is a one uh, um, thread difference one one of the one is one of this d nominal d nominal is the thread uh, the uh, or is the uh, uh, is the is the diameter from this point that means from this point middle of the uh, of the teeth to the middle of the other teeth so this is called as a your uh this this is termed as your d minor or rather we can say your <coughs> sorry uh this is this is termed as your d nominal okay d minor is uh, d, d minor is termed as the as termed as this point to the other end of this point this point this point to this point and d major is from this point to this point okay right. so uh for a uh, for india uh, we follow this one isometric thread uh, so the iso metric uh, metric thread that is a government certified threads uh, as well as it has been certi uh, certified by uh, our big uh, expertise and everyone so there is a relationship between the height uh, height pitch and everything what is height let us see over there height is this point to this point that means one uh, uh the teeth co uh, connection point from this point to this point this is called height and p is the pitch okay so uh, as i have told you d minor equals to d major so these are the relations what we go for uh, for designing a isometric threads so what are the isometric standardization there are many of the standardization like iso 26 uh, 261 iso 262 so on and so on so on so on so on so on so every uh, thread uh, manufacturers uh, every bolt as well as screw manufacturers have to follow the isometric threads not every that depends on country to country it's not uh, like iso is uh, hard it's very followed in in india so what happens is uh, to understand the thread to be uh, standardized standardized that that stand so that it could be it could be developed in other country also suppose a uh, ship is traveling from uh, from um, india to uh, us so while on the way it some parts has rip, uh, has gone down so they have to manufacture this that ship that part so the standardization has to be taken from iso screw threads or something so that part is having some screw or a bolt or something so to manufacture this to to uh, to, to to go with the maximum uh, to have the max, to have the maximum efficiency to manufacture we have to go this way what are the three stresses you could see in the threads uh, thread joints so thread joints can have two three types of stresses one is tension if a uh, if it is stressed over here uh, upward and downward or it may be in this way this uh, in the sideward if it's a it's a uh, long it's if it's a long uh, it is in a vertical way then it will be a tension loading and if it's in horizontal way the loading is done in horizontal there will be a shell loading 
that means the this bolt can go can rip off uh, due to tension loading this bolt can rip off due to due to shear loading and this bolt can rip off due to your bending stress that means uh, this is going this one this way and this is going this way so there is a bending or a moment created so for that moment there will be a bending on this on the complete this section and hence there will be bending load and bending load uh, of the thread may, may might break the thread joints also it is same for the shear as for the tension so what is the torque required uh, torque required uh, for uh, tightening what do you mean tightening the, since you can see the low the this things has been this bolt this nut has been tightened over there been between this two material so uh, with the tighten with them with the bolt so what happens you need to understand the tightening that can be how we could tighten it so there is a formula given uh, the formula derived so the formula is over here this is the, the thing is that you don't have to understand the form don't you have to don't by heart the formula you have to understand how the formula works now this is the thread cross section okay uh, alpha is the uh, angle single uh, angle or you may say that the uh, angle of uh, pressure and b is the just a deflected angle what happens due to the material so uh, from this we could derive these things f is the axial tension and small uh, uh, f is uh, f is the axial tension and small f is the, the friction of force or you may say that uh, oh, sorry uh, frictional uh, it, it should be on the down but i have not uh, this is my print writing mistake or typing mistake it should, there should be down over here so it's the frictional force uh, d2 is the uh, pitch diameter and dn uh, dn is your uh, pitch diameter of bearing surface that bearing surface is nothing but over here it's present over here fine so this is the formula which drive everything there's a mu mu is the for threaded portion and mu uh, mu n is for the bearing uh, bearing position the, so the bearing position lies over here you know, in if you magnify over this one to this you can see the bearing position is here so this is what happens okay this is a half angle screw thread and lead angle th thread this is, this is related to a pressure angle of the uh, threads how it works it will be coming in your classes okay next next is how you could explain this in terms of one load is given in a in a shear loading if a if a load is applied over here uh, this is a plate attached with a plate fixed plate and a four bolts four bolts are connected okay so you are applying a force over here and the cent and the center of gravity of four bolt is uh, or you may say the center of gravity of the fixed plate is, is over here so among to for to simulate on the things we have to understand that how the the loading is done so the distance from here to here is termed as e so uh, to find out the entire uh, load acting on the body we have to understand how to how many loads are working and how we have to how to to derive so this things is will be this thing will be used in your mathematics to for to solve the uh, problems mathematical problems so what happened is a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus dot 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 ax a n x n so as you know this is a mathematical terms where you find the x dash that is the the center we or the gravitational center you find in terms of x coordinate and in terms of y coordinate this will help to find out the center of gravity while solving the maths it is only for your references next what happens if we simulate we and we simulate this load to be acting this load uh, uh, this load is acting over here or in other words it's impossible to understand that the load is acting over here so you could assume that the uh, due to the bending action the load is acting on the center of gravity okay let us assume so with respect to it you can find out uh, it's only for 
assumption it's only for assumption let me clear you it was not it is not practically possible or it is only for assumption that suppose this force is acting over here or you may understand you may understand in the other way the free body diagram if force is acting over here what will be the load acting over here 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 so there will be two load there will be two forces acting on there one is primary and one is secondary why it is a primary and what is secondary the primary is related the force react, uh, with respect to the fixed blade fixed surface or fixed plate and the secondary uh, lo loading on the uh, on the bolt is due to this this plate okay so what happens primary force secondary force primary force secondary force primary force secondary. so this all happens which gives us a resultant force as P1, resultant force as P2, P3, and P4, so on. If, it, if there is a number of volt is 7, 8, 9, 10, so this will go as, as, the, as shown in the figure. But it should be symmetric. If it is unsymmetric, the equations will change. So what happens, so, so we, let, we can assume that if it is so that the free body diagram shows me like this, so I could say that the primary force, the primary force is equal. Let us assume the primary force is equal, and it is the uh, and it is the and the it is equals to the total force divided by number of number of volts. Fine. So that's done. So what happens? Let us find out uh, the uh, out. Uh, let us find out the moment at the center of gravity like p into e p1 r1 plus p2 r2 p3 r4 from it with respect to the center of gravity we will be getting this thing fine now try to understand the distance of r1 will increase if this will increase that means that means if this if this there is a maximum force there is a maximum force that the, the force due to the force exerted on this plate increases that means this uh, the center of gravity may slide with respect to this one to downwards okay so to understand in the other perception is that this bolt may get rip off from this plate fine that means if it gets rip off that means there will be uh, the center of the gravity the center or the say axial center of this bolt will uh, will ext will shift from this point to this point from this point to this point that means there's an increase of r fine so let me show you another in a, in a big picture uh, screen white okay this is the point this is the center this is the center of the uh, center or the axial point of the bolt if a force is applying over here and making this uh, uh, plate to move to uh, uh, have a bending bending uh, or a movement what will happen this center of gravity will shift towards this one so hence this and there will be a increase in r1 okay so unwind screen okay so hence there is for r1 r2 r3 r4 so let us that means that if the force secondary force increases there will be a, a increase in r1 r2 r3 and r4 the is a, or you may use as a constant c c c c okay so what you can do, we can apply this C over, we could apply this C over here. This means this entire C we can apply over here. Fine. What will happen? I will be getting these equations. Fine. After getting these equations, I could, I could again, I could again do the same things. This C this c could be uh, could be deduced over here as shown in this direction as you can see c1 for that i could find p1 fine again 
I could deduce this C2 over here and I could find P2 dash. Hence for P3 and P4 similarly. So this is what for today and I expect some questions from you. There uh, will be studying this bolted joint for entire week as well as the welded joints, uh, how it works and how what are the factors related to it. Okay, stay home, stay blessed.